Welcome to episode 45 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today we're exploring ControlNet for the Flux Dev model, focusing on version 2.0 of ControlNet Union Pro, a powerful update that brings even more creative flexibility and precision. Let's open Comfy UI, go to Workflow, and click Open. You can download all these workflows for free from Discord. Let's start with this canny version. This is the workflow. It looks complicated, but you'll see it's actually quite simple. I've added everything you need to run the workflow here in this Pixaroma note. If you've used Flux before, you probably already have most of the models. The first model is a Flux dev model. I'm using the Q8 version, and you can download it from here. Then go to your Comfy UI folder, find the models folder, open the diffusion models folder, and place your model there. If it's too big for your video card, you can click here to download a smaller model, like the Q4 version or another option. Next, you need two models for the dual clip loader. Use the GGUF versions because they are faster. You can download the T5 model from here or use smaller alternatives from this link. You'll also need the Clip L model. I just download both models and load them here. You'll also need a model for the load VAE node. You can download it from Hugging Face. If you get a message saying you're not logged in, it means you need to log in to Hugging Face first. Click here to go to the model page, log in and accept the terms. After that, you'll be able to download the VAE model. Again, if you've used Flux before, you probably already have it. Now the most important part, the control net model. Click here, go to your models folder again, and this time place the model in the control net folder. But first rename it. If you have multiple models, they might have the same name. I renamed mine to Flux Line CN Line Pro Line 2, whatever name you use, make sure you load it with the same name in this node. And the last step, you need the custom nodes. I used only three custom nodes here. Go to Manager, and then to Custom Nodes Manager. Search for GGUF, and install that node. Search for AUX, and install that one too. Then search for KTool, and install it as well. After that, restart Comfy UI. If you go to Settings, and then to KTool, you'll see that by default this Gululu, or whatever it's called, option is active, and it shows a cute dinosaur. If you don't want to see it, you can disable it from there. Okay, now you have everything you need to run it and we can test the workflow. Upload a reference image here. I'll use this building image. Then I use the scale image to total pixel node to make sure it's not too big and works well with the flux model. I set it to one megapixel here. So when I run the workflow, whatever the size of the original image is, it will be scaled down to one megapixel so the model can handle it. Here I have this node from the KTool custom node. It extracts the image size. You can see it shows 1024 pixels for both width and height. Now, let's say I use a bigger image, like taking a screenshot and pasting it into the load image node. When I load the workflow, you'll see it has a better size. Even if the original was over 2000 pixels, now it's more manageable. Tip. It's best to load images that have dimensions in multiples of 8 or 64, as those work better with Flux. Let's load the building image again. After the image is resized, I pick the width and height directly from the image size node, so you don't have to enter it manually. But you can also disconnect those and manually enter the width and height you want. Just keep the same ratio as the uploaded image. This is a text-to-image workflow which is why we use the empty latent image node. The reference image is just for guidance. So I'll leave those nodes connected so the final image matches the reference image size. Um, for the preprocessor, I also use the same resolution using the height instead of the width. Again, you can set it manually, but I prefer everything to match. So when I run the workflow, I get a new canny map that matches the reference image size after upscaling. And then that canny map image is going to be used by control net. All those nodes just make the image smaller and prepare a map that the AI can understand. So when we generate an image, it knows how to follow that map. In the low control net model node, we load the control net model. If you named it differently, make sure you load the correct name. 
If you get a MAT1, MAT2 error, that means you didn't load the right models. Either you loaded an SDXL control net by mistake, or you loaded the right flux control net, but you have a different base model, like SDXL, or you are using the wrong VAE. If all the models are correct, you won't get any errors. From the set union control type, you can try different options, but I usually leave it on auto. That control net is also connected to the apply control net node. From there, you control the strength and end steps, and you need to find a balance depending on your image and your preprocessor. All of that then goes to the K sampler, where the magic happens and it generates your image. So in short, all you have to do is load the image, add a prompt, like I did here, saying I want a frozen scene of a building at sunset, set the strength and end percent. A value of one is too strong, so I usually play between 0.5 and 0.8 values here. The canning map is generated, everything goes to the K sampler, and then you get the final image. As you can see, it works. The reference image is used as a guide to generate a new image based on our prompt. I'll change the seed to fixed, so you can see how the settings influence the generated image. Now I'll set both the strength and end step to one. If you add this node, you'll see it shows the default values here. But those values are usually too strong. Depending on the preprocessor you're using, the result can become too dark or look a bit ugly. So if I change the strength to 0.9, it already starts to look better because we give the model more freedom. If I go down to 0.8, it has even more flexibility. The same goes for end percent. This controls how long ControlNet influences the generation. For example, setting it to 0.8 means ControlNet guides 80% of the process, then the rest is left to the model's creativity. Now let's change it to a lower value like 0.35 so it's more obvious. You can see the trees are different now, that's because ControlNet guided only about 35% of the image and the rest was generated more freely, making it more different from the reference. So try adjusting these settings to get results that are more similar or more different compared to your reference image. Now for the preprocessor, besides the Canny Edge preprocessor, you can also use Depth Anything. There are a few versions, but I like to use Depth Anything version 2. When I run it, you'll see that the Canny map, which captured the edges, is now changed to a depth map instead similar to what you see in 3D software, where white areas are closer to the camera and it fades into gray and dark as it goes further away. You would use this when you are interested in capturing dimension and don't need all the fine details. For example, before we had ripples of water visible in the image, but now we get a smooth surface covered in snow, which is very useful. You can also convert this text to image workflow into an image to image workflow. Uh, right now, our scaled down image is sent into the preprocessor and then into the empty latent image node, which goes to the K sampler. This is why the AI can generate anything based only on our text prompt. With ControlNet, it has a better understanding because of the map we give it. To convert to image to image, we delete the empty latent image node because we don't want to start with a blank image. We want to start with our reference image but our image is in a different format, so we can't connect it directly to the K sampler. So what do we do? We need a VAE encode node. This node will encode the pixel-based image into a format the model can understand. Once we add this node, we now have a latent output that we can connect to the K sampler, and it also needs the VAE input, so we connect that too. Now the last thing we need to do is adjust the denoise setting. For flux, I recommend values between 0.8 and 0.95. Let's say I set it to 0.9 and run the workflow. Now the output is very similar to our original image, but it looks a bit more frozen, matching the scene we want. If you use 0.95, it will be even more different. And if you want an even bigger change, it's better to use the text to image workflow instead. Let's open the next workflow you can reuse the previous one, but I like to have a separate workflow uh, for each setup, so I always have the right settings saved. So let's open a depth workflow. I've loaded this portrait of a woman, and for the prompt, I used a woman with purple hair wearing a green dress. 
This workflow is using the depth preprocessor. And when we run it, you'll see it creates a depth map that will guide the generation. Now, remember, this doesn't keep the face exactly. It captures the form and depth of the image, not the fine details. And here's the result. Without ControlNet, it's hard to prompt and get the exact composition you want. But with ControlNet, you have a lot more control, like how close the subject is to the camera, how the hair flows, and so on, especially when you have a reference image. Even if you don't have an exact match, you can get something close or quickly edit an image in Photoshop to fit your needs. Um, the next workflow is one that some people had issues with, but now it works pretty well. It's the pose workflow. I am using a photo of a woman with her hands on her face, like in a surprise pose. For the prompt, I use a woman with short purple hair wearing a green dress. Now this part is important. For the preprocessor node, I used to go with open pose, but it's now recommended to use a different one. Use the DW preprocessor instead. Um, the settings are also a bit different in the apply control net node. You use a higher value for strength and a lower value for n percent. When we run the workflow, it generates a skeleton-like map of the body, face, and hands. It uses different colors so the AI can tell which hand is left or right, where the face is, and how everything is positioned. And here's the result. Just like I asked, hands in the right position, short purple hair, and overall matching the pose. Try different seeds um, to explore other variations. You can find an image online in the pose you want, or even take a photo of yourself and use it as a reference. As you can see, even if the reference pose was of a woman, it still works to generate a man. The pose is what matters. This only works for people. If you get a black map, that means it couldn't detect a body in your reference image. Moving to the next workflow, any line art. This is useful if you have the line art of a character or design and want to turn it into a final render. You can also use Canny for this kind of work, but line art keeps the actual lines from the design, which can give you more accurate results. In this case, I use the any line art preprocessor. There are other options too, like manga and anime, but let's stick with this one for now. For the prompt, I added something simple like a cute cartoon pink bunny, just to see what I'd get. Of course, Flux works better with long, detailed prompts, so I recommend writing more descriptive ones. This is the map image from the preprocessor. It kept the line art from the original design, and here's the result. A very similar drawing, now rendered in color and style. Of course, you can edit the prompt and add whatever background or colors you want to fit your needs, like I did in this example. It's a really cool way to quickly get colored versions of your line art or sketches. So try different settings and prompts. It's quite useful. But what if you want to combine multiple preprocessors? I tried combining pose with the depth preprocessor, and it seems to work. I haven't found a better way to do it, so I'm using this method for now. After the image is loaded and resized, I linked it to two nodes instead of one. One goes to the depth anything preprocessor, and the other goes to the DW preprocessor. When I run it, you can see how it generates both maps, one for depth and one for pose. I also duplicated the apply control net node. So now the depth preprocessor is connected to the first apply control net node, and the pose preprocessor is connected to the second apply control net node. Both apply control net nodes use the same control net model. That's the only real difference here, just adding an extra apply control net node each one linked to its own preprocessor. And here are the results. It seems to be working. Maybe not as clean as using just one preprocessor, but still pretty good. I had to reduce the strength and end step for both control net nodes to make it work properly. If the values are too high, the results can get strange. For example, if I bypass the control net with the depth preprocessor, you'll see that now it captures the pose, but it doesn't recognize the long hair on the woman. So when you need more details, it's worth trying to combine multiple preprocessors and see if you can get better results. Let's open another workflow. I added this woman in this pose, and I wanted to create a Mona Lisa warrior. As you can see, it has a trigger word for that. So 
for this workflow, you need to download this Mona Lisa Laura and put it in the Laura's folder, then restart or refresh Comfy UI. You also need the RG3 node in case you don't have it already for the Power Laura node. This node can load one or more Loras, but it needs to be a Flux dev-based Laura. In this note, I added some info, but if you add your own Loras, you can edit the trigger words and settings for that specific Laura. So I want the pose of the woman, but as Mona Lisa with a sword. Now that Laura, or any Laura you trained, like of yourself, an influencer girl or whatever, will influence the result. So we got the pose, as you can see, with one hand in the air, and this is the final result. I can go and load a different image and adapt the prompt. Just make sure you include the trigger words for your Laura in the prompt. You can also use different preprocessors if it's not a person Laura. And I got this. Now this seed is not so close to Mona Lisa, so let's try another one. Okay, on this one, I also got a surprise. Not only Mona Lisa. And for the last workflow, I used a different Flux-based model called Flux Mania version 5, like in the tutorial from episode 41. So check that one if you want to see more. What's different here is that you need to download the Fluxmania model and place it in the Diffusion Models folder. After that, refresh Comfy UI. In this workflow, we don't use a GGUF loader. Instead, we have a Load Diffusion Model node where we load Fluxmania. The rest of the models and nodes are the same. Fluxmania is an FP8 model, so it probably won't work on Mac. Let's run it. This is the prompt I use for the image and usually Fluxmania gives pretty realistic results. And here's the result. We got the purple hair, like we asked, the pose matches, and it even has small imperfections that make it feel more realistic. Let's try another seed. You can really have a lot of fun with ControlNet. If you want to learn more about version 2 of ControlNet, you can find a link here, and it will open their Hugging Face page. There, you can read more about the model, how it was trained, recommended settings, and other useful info. Also, at the top of that page, there's another link to the FP8 version of this control net, which is a bit smaller, good if you're having memory issues. Just download the model and give it a name that makes sense so it's easier to find later. The workflows are available for free on Discord. Uh, just go to the Pixaroma Workflows channel. Uh, they're organized by episode. Uh, for example, today's episode is 45. Uh, so you click here and I'll add the workflows once the video is ready, just like I did for other episodes. You can scroll up or down to find all the info you need. The workflows look like this. It's a JSON file that you download and drag into Comfy UI. If you go to any channel and type a hash symbol and then write Pixaroma, you'll see Pixaroma workflows there. You can select it, press enter, and it will create a link. Or you can go to any episode like this. Just type hash episode followed by the episode number, then click on that number and press enter. Now you can click that message to jump straight to that episode. Here are some ideas you can try. Take a photo of yourself and use it with the pose preprocessor, or it can be just a photo of your hand, like I did here. Then I use the depth preprocessor to create an old rusty hand that looks interesting or maybe like a lost stone hand in the jungle. Here I tried something like a Venom style hand, but it just looked dirty. Then I took a photo of some bananas and used the Canny preprocessor. I got this futuristic scene from it, but if you lower the strength and end steps, it gives the AI more freedom, and I ended up creating something like a dinosaur head from it. Here again, I use random objects. I just needed the, the shapes for composition. And I got this interesting scene which looks like it's from a video game. And this one is also pretty interesting. Um, I just gave the initial image to ChatGPT and asked for prompts based on what I had in mind. Here I added my logo and then used the Canny Edge preprocessor and I created all kinds of interesting images from it. And that pretty much covers what I had in mind for today. If you found something useful, leave a like and a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you to everyone who joined the YouTube membership. Your support means a lot. Big thanks to the Legends, the top level members. By the way, Legends have access to the Secret Legends channel on Discord in case you didn't know. Just make sure your Discord is connected to your YouTube account to get the Legends role. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and see you on Discord.